Strafo. Hello, it is the wrap up. I'm Gareth Roberts. This is Craig Hannan, and we're at Anfield today to tell you the story of Home Baked. Uh, they've experienced a little bit of a problem, which we'll get more into with John Carden, who's the chairman of Home Baked. Uh, but, Craig, for people who don't know Home Baked, it's a fantastic bakery. They make fantastic pies. It's part of people's ritual now. Uh, what's your favourite home baked pie? Uh, it's the Shankly. I, I, I probably have one every every two weeks, every home game. It's, like you said, it's become a pre match ritual for most Reds. It's nice to come to Anfield, spend your money uh, in, within a community business rather than spending six quid on a, on a terrible hot dog within the ground. So it's nice to it's nice to give back to uh, to the Anfield community. Yeah, let's get in there and find out a little bit more about what's been happening. Um, my name is John Carden. I'm the chair of the board, uh, Home Bake Cooperative Bakery. Been involved about three and a half years. Been on the board all that time and been chair for about two years now. I mean, it's more of a community hub than a cafe. Yeah. Because it's the only place that's open on the on the road, yeah. um, so you know, people drop in. We, we yeah, our, our aims when we started were to feed, educate, and employ local people. So obviously, with the cafe, we do the feeding bit, and with the pies, um, the education we run classes, teaching people how to bake, um, and the employment we employ twelve people on you know, living wage level uh, income um, hours that suit them. And that's money going by directly back into the, the local economy. But a real blow, John, on Saturday night after the Manchester United game when you took record takings from lots of people buying pies. Someone broke in, didn't they, in the night and they've taken the safe. Yeah, absolutely gutted. I mean, the, for the, 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 the people who put all the effort in that day, it's, it's, it's like winning the FA Cup, then losing it on the bus on the way home. It, it's just it's gut-wrenching. Um, and as you say, it, it was our record takings. For, 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 we, we knew it'd be a good day, early kickoff, United, so it's a sellout. The weather was nice, so and we opened before and after the game. So he's all there, and, and to, to have delivered on that, and then yeah, the safe wasn't broken into. They, they jammed the safe off the wall and took it with them. So um, yeah, absolutely gut wrenching, because, because you know. For all the, the, the reputation we have for our pies and the quality of our food, um, you know, we're living hand to mouth. Um, we're not making bucket loads of cash. You know, our, our biggest headache now is we got the staff to pay on the 25th of October, and that's you know, a fair chunk of it disappeared. It, it reminds us that you know, our community is multi-layered, because you are right on a match day, our community as a far wider football and we are the local for you know lots of people who don't live in the area don't know the area apart from the stadium uh, and see this as a safe retreat maybe they well, you can't drink and drive or maybe they, they, they don't drink anyway so they, they come in here there's this banter with other football fans um, we, we use it as a ticket drop-off we had a couple the other week drop their buggy, took the kids to the game, dropped the buggy here, <laughs> picked it up afterwards. We just look up the suitcases for you know, international travellers. So, so yeah, it, it, again, it becomes a, a wider community club on a match day. OK, a little bit of football chat now. And uh, Liverpool, as you will know, absolutely battered Maribor in the week. Uh, a 7-0 win, which is a record victory for Liverpool away from home in Europe. Um, and that's one way to sort of get everyone back on track and happy and all that sort of thing. And yet they're not hardy. Uh, there's still people moaning, saying, well, they're not very good, them, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure what their quality is like, and blah, 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 blah. Even Rio Ferdinand on BT Sport saying they shouldn't even be in the Champions League. Well, they've, they've won their league about 14 times, Rio. I think it's fair enough. And also they've had some decent results in the group stages in the past. So all in all, I mean, what, I don't know how you feel about it, Craig, but I just think, you know, it, it was good shooting practice. It was good to see our lads scoring goals, celebrating, smiling, and hopefully it gets the confidence up now in front of goal. Yeah, look, you can only beat who you know what the team that's put in front of you, and I just don't get that from Rio Ferdinand. You know, um, the last time they were in the group stages, they drew with Chelsea, they drew with Spartak as well, who have beaten Sevilla, so they've shown that they're no mugs either. Um, and it's seven goals, and you know we could we could be sitting here talking about how 
um, they ground that out a draw, and it was a, a you know another um, another terrible performance with the Reds, and and everyone should be downbeat, but we shouldn't be. We should be up for it. We should be up for this game against Spurs. I'm I'm now confident. We've got a decent record away at Spurs. They're still getting to grips with Wembley. I think they yeah. beat Bournemouth last week, but they're still it's, it's not there. It's still not their home stadium. So I'm quietly confident going into the game, and I think most most Reds should be. Yeah, I mean Swansea and Burnley have been to Wembley there and got got draws with Spurs. Chelsea obviously beat them there as well. So I th- yeah, Liverpool should go there with no fear really, and and hopeful of a result because it is a weird one. I mean, I I, I, I seen match of the day too. I think it was last week with a load of Spurs fans talking about what it's like to be at Wembley as your home if you like for this season, and none of them are enjoying it. So I imagine the atmosphere is pretty dead, and therefore you're taking away a big advantage from the home side there. Um, but Neil now to talk more about the Spurs game. Tottenham Hotspur, Wembley, Liverpool, go to Wembley. It's not the Wembley that you want, the Wembley that you expect, the Wembley that ends in shiny things given one way or the other. But there is a little bit of a shiny prize being given out this weekend, I think. I think it's the one which says, who does this type of football better? We've gone to Tottenham last two seasons, and I think we've been the better side, shaded it once, much the better side another time. They've come to Anfield and we've demonstrated that we are the better side. And they'll be going into this game thinking, oh no, not Liverpool. They'll also be thinking, we're really good. The reason why is because they are. It's a really good point that they've just got themselves at Real Madrid. They've done brilliantly to get that one. And it's a marker, another marker on Pochettino Spurs' journey. They'll have their eye on Sunday for yet another marker. Three points to get that swing away from Liverpool, to push on, to challenge the two Mancunian clubs, to kick on this season. How do you kick on from 86 points? Well, they've got to find a way. They're a very, very good side and they're very good at what they do. But I think we're better at what they do. I think we've shown that time and again against them in these last two seasons. We're ever so slightly better at it than they are. Ever so slightly is not a gulf. It doesn't win you a football match. It doesn't automatically mean you get the spoils every single time. That's not how this works. But ever so slightly can be enough and it's a starting point. Liverpool have got to take their Maribor sharpness into this one against Tottenham. They've got to take their opportunities when they come. They've got to look to be the better side, and they can do that. Elsewhere on the Anfield wrap, we'll have all the coverage around this game. We've got previews, we've got them coming out of our ears. Reviews, post-match shows, we've got them coming out of our ears as well. You don't have to listen to them all, but those that you listen to, I think you'll be so impressed with the quality of them. We're looking for insight to every single opportunity and to find out more and more about what it is to support Liverpool in this season. This season that could go either way. And for us, this season takes us on a journey, not only as the Wembley, as the London at the weekend, but we're going over to Belfast on the 4th of November, where we're going to watch the West Ham game. Then we'll be doing our post-match show in front of an audience. People will be more than welcome to chip in. We'll be doing that straight after the game. Then we'll take a little break and we'll do the full Anfield app live show in Belfast. Can't wait to do it. Can't wait to get out there. There'll be some live music as well. We're going to have an absolute ball. We're at Mandela Hall and it is uh, £10 for that on the 4th of November, kicking off at half past five. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it almost as much as I'm looking forward to the weekend. Two sides committed to absolutely attacking the life out of each other in the sense of attacking, which isn't just trying to put the ball in the back of the net, but in the sense of closing down, harrying, hustling, being stronger than, demonstrating. I think we're going to demonstrate something on Sunday. I think Liverpool are going to send a marker out. I think Maribor was just the first step. Very soon we won't be talking about this side only having won one or two in eight or nine. But instead we may well be talking about, good Lord, Liverpool from nowhere, the 14, 15, 16 unbeaten. I think this manager knows that this side is about to kick on and I think it kicks on Sunday. Kick on with us at the Anfield Wrap. And yeah, to end the wrap-up this week, uh, it's been another fantastic week in terms of content that we've been putting out. Uh, I'm biased, obviously, but it honestly has. Um, and we'd just like to show you this clip from uh, a podcast we did with Damien Hughes, who's a, a sports psychologist who's worked with a string of top-level sportsmen and women. Uh, he's currently working with the Scotland rugby team. He gets inside minds, he helps them get results, and we thought that's something that maybe Jürgen Klopp could do with until the Maribor game. Uh, so watch this video, see what you think. Uh, if you don't subscribe, please do and give it a go and if you don't want to commit to five pound a month just yet you can buy this show as an individual show um, and look that up on Bandcamp we're putting a few things on there now if you don't want to commit to a month so give it a try that's been the wrap up up the reds get them on detail just get them on there so we were talking about the example of um, Ferguson did it years ago and Andy Cole was playing for him and he kept missing chances Mm. and he's like I'm not really worried because the process is he's he's getting himself in positions to miss it eventually it'll come right again. And what you often find is players will get out of their own way eventually. 
when they do that, when it almost becomes an autopilot, which is where they'll just start striking it without thinking too deeply about it. But at that stage, you just need to get them focused. On yeah, because that's what so much sport's about, isn't it? Especially, you know, that elite level one, because you've played it so many times, because you've been coached so often, because you've done basically the same movements so many times. A lot of it's just natural, isn't it? There's no, there's no great yeah. thinking process. It's not like they've gone... I'm going to miss this um, and then they hit it and they've missed it and they go oh, that's because I just thought I was going to miss it there's, there's not even that thinking time is there it's I remember just... a few years ago I did some work with a lad who uh, he'd never played at Wembley and he was uh, and he'd, he'd always been injured before he got uh, the opportunity to play there and he convinced himself that he was jinxed and then he ended up he knew if he, he that there was a potential Wembley game coming up on the horizon and he got himself in a real state about it because he anticipates I'm going to get injured in the next four weeks guarantee I'll get injured because this is how it works so his head's gone into outcome and he's got this idea so what we had to do was say right let's go to performance first of all where do you need to be in terms of the, the, his fitness and his health and things like that so we'd looked at things like that and then we'd looked at the processes over that four weeks that he just said you just focus on getting your diet right your nutrition right get your training right make sure that and then literally right up to the moment where he went on the pitch at Wembley we had him focused on just take three deep breaths so we were focused on that moment and said, once you get on the field, autopilot will kick in, you'll be absolutely fine. But up until that moment, we were almost trying to get him out of outcome mode into process mode just to focus on, just take three deep breaths, calm yourself down, get those butterflies out of the way, get on the field and then just take over. Don't think too deeply around it from then on. So it's often a technique that you'll, that you'll see guys, especially when they're struggling, they go to outcome all the time. They just want to get there. So you find that they're reaching or overreaching for it rather than just playing what's normal and natural. So the old Dunning-Kruger law says that, you you know, if you're stupid, you're too stupid to know that you're stupid. <laughs> you see, yeah. So often for some of these guys where the best players will be able to break down the process, they, they're not doing it by accident. They know very well the runs, the timing, the foot movement, the, the body shape, things like that. So for these guys that are playing at Liverpool or elite level, they'll be able to tell you all of this. So you just get them focused on that. 